Hey, Gareth Bale has announced his retirement from football at uh, age just 33. And I say that because Messi's still going, even though Ronaldo's obviously gone to Saudi Arabia, he, he's still playing on. Ibrahimovic is still going. All right, There are players who are his contemporaries, who are maybe a little bit older, who are still playing, and he's decided to call it a day at 33. Now, Ibrahimovic was told he was done when he went to the MLS. He would, oh, he would He's done. He would play a season or two and he's done. He's now back at AC Milan and he's just won yet another league title, right? and he's in his 40s. Buffon is 45, is still playing for Parma in Serie A, so there are some players he's played with and against, for example, um, who are still playing, at, at some level, somewhere in the professional game. So that's, a, you know, and some people say, well, he's earned his money, he's won his trophies, he's probably been Wales' greatest ever player of the modern era. Although Ian Rush and Ray Charles may have something to say about that, uh, especially Ian Rush um, and Ryan Giggs. He, he is an enigma. He does divide opinion. Um, he does. Now, what a lot of people will remember him for is his spell at Real Madrid. The success that comes with it and, and those Champions League goals, for example, that he scored. And how he turned Champions League finals on their head. And then his relationship with the club, the media and the fans and how that was really a love-hate relationship at times where he sat on the bench, he's not playing minutes. He's earning this big salary but not playing. Then he comes back to Tottenham on the line. And it's a far cry from the young lad who bursts onto the scene as a 16-year-old with Southampton. Who then makes the big move to Tottenham. When Southampton are a lower-level football league club, they're not in the Premier League at the time. Makes the move to Spurs. Has a great run in that Spurs side after he transitions from a left back to a left winger. So as positional change benefits him and the team. He then has some great nights in Europe in the Europa League and the Champions League, which gains the attention of the big clubs in Europe. Obviously, in this case, Real Madrid. Makes the big money move to Real Madrid. Wins loads of silverware with Real Madrid. Champions Leagues, La Ligas, Copa del Reyes. The falling out with Zidane and the relationship with the fan base and the media in Spain obviously is where a lot of people go, oh, he's more interested in the golf course. All right? Those golf course memes, the jokes. When in reality, we don't fully know what happened in Spain and his spell there. But what is very interesting is every player that was signed with the money since he left Tottenham, who then went there to play at Tottenham, has either left and won silverware elsewhere, or hasn't really kicked on. And then he comes back on loan and it doesn't work. And then he goes back to Real Madrid to be a bench warmer again. And again, a divisive issue there and his involvement with the team and, and, and the relationship with, with the, the coaching staff and, 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 the, and the club board and the fans and the media. It became a bit of a revolving toxic cycle. And then he finishes off his playing career, obviously at the World Cup, but also his club career in the MLS with LAFC. I am surprised he decided not to give a full season to LAFC and just go, right, I'm done with European football. I'm going to play a season or two in the MLS, a full couple of seasons, and wind down my career in peace and quiet. Um, <clears throat> and earn a decent paycheck while doing it. And I, I will say this. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, people said he was done when he went to the MLS. He's now gone back to Europe. He's won a league title with AC Milan in Italy and is looking still as effective now in his early 40s as he was in his early 30s. Gianluigi Buffon is still playing at the age of nearly 45. He's 45 in just over a couple of months, still playing for Parma. Yes, goalkeeping is a different position and some goalkeepers do play into their 40s. But there's some players he's played with and against who are still playing at the top level in their late 30s, early 40s. Modric is still playing. You know, Ronaldo, we can all, you know, debate the Ronaldo situation going to Saudi Arabia, but he was still, you know, a Man United player until just before the World Cup. Messi's just won the World Cup. He's only a year older than Bale. Nearly 35, but he's only a year older than Bale. So there are some of his contemporaries who he's played with and against who are still playing at whatever level and, and, and still playing and still contributing to whatever club they have decided to play with. And he decided to call it a day at 33. Now, yes, I think his position and, 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 and the fact that his position relies on speed has something to do with it. But then you look at one of his one of his countrymen, who was his national manager until some legal issues interfered. And that's Ryan Giggs played into his 40s and was very effective 
into his 40s for Manchester United and Wales. That is an interesting one. One of his contemporaries, who he models himself on as a player, not as a person, because Ryan Giggs as a person is not a particularly nice individual, but as a player, models himself on Ryan Giggs. They play exactly the same position. And Ryan Giggs had a fantastic playing career. And it, I do find it interesting. So what does Gareth Bale do now? What, what does he do now? Because what I find interesting is the Real Madrid period. That's what's really interesting about Gareth Bale and how our perception of him as the player and the person is tempered by what we see and what we saw as fans, because we don't know the full ins and outs of what's going on at the club, behind the scenes, in training, in team meetings, relationship with non-playing staff. The relationship with the media clearly was toxic because the Spanish media is just as brutal as the British sports media. The relationship with the fans, that wasn't great for lengthy spells. There were times early on he seemed a little bit unsettled, yet he goes on to have such impacts in Champions League finals and in Copa del Rey finals and in La Liga. And again, with Wales, he seemed to up his, he seemed to turn up for Wales, where with Real Madrid, you just weren't sure which Gareth Bale you were going to get. Were you going to get a fantastic, I'm going to turn the game on its head and score two or three goals like that? Or am I going to sit on the bench pull funny faces and not take the whole situation seriously? And that's the perception. But what is your perception of Gareth Bale? Because Southampton, he they got he had rave reviews when he was at Southampton through the youth setup uh, and with the first team setup when he was there, which is why he moved to Tottenham. Uh, obviously, they worked out there were some deficiencies on the defensive side of his game when he was a left back or a left wing back, so they moved him further forward because he had pace and he had ability going forward, and it ended up benefiting both Spurs and himself, and obviously benefited his career massively. Because there were some concerns at Spurs, oh, this guy's going to be a bit of a flop, there's a bit of a curse here. Like, he is talented, but is is this his best position, or can we transition him further up the field? The same argument's been had with Trent Alexander-Arnold, for example, for Liverpool. Should he really be a winger rather than a wing-back? And there's some cred credence to the argument. Gareth Bale is the example where, actually, he was better suited further forward. He makes the big money move. Yes, he has lots of success at Real Madrid, but there's also that toxic relationship with the fan base, the media, and the club itself. It plays out badly. He has a loan spell back at Spurs. He then goes back to Real Madrid. Big salary bearing one. Massive salary per week. Ends up at LAFC. Does really well there. I think they won the, the MLS Cup, if I'm not mistaken. So he wins silverware there. And then he goes to the World Cup and doesn't really perform. I mean, Wales didn't perform as a whole, but he, he didn't look great. And now he's decided to call it a day. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Place your thoughts on Gareth Bale below. Do you think he's misinterpreted in the media? Like, misrepresented? misrepresented? Um, is he really as controversial and as divisive because of his time at Real Madrid? Like, how that all played out? Is he the best Welsh player of all time? Would Ian Rush and Ryan Giggs, for example, and Ray Charles have something to say about that? Because I feel that they had better longevity in the game. Admittedly, the eras they were playing were different and the style of play was different, that the quality of pitches, that the, the balls they were using, the boots, the equipment altered and become lighter, the pitches are firmer. But Ian Rush played into his late 30s, Ryan Giggs played into his 40s, and then you've got Gareth Bale finishing at 33. It is interesting, considering Ryan Giggs, same position, played an extra 10 years. So it's an interesting one. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching. Please place your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.